As we head towards the end of June and our big sale, we talked about a number of topics from industrial ships that are you know, a little bit cross compatible with piracy. Certainly we've talked about military ships where the value is more or less obvious. I'm sure many of you have seen videos of now fully manned um, retaliators in PVP and in PVE. And <laughs> I still find it kind of funny when, when you see people's like, oh wait, they did upsize those guns on the turrets to size threes. And they start to realize, oh man, this thing is a killer. Yeah, there, and being a long range bomber, it is pretty cool. But today we're talking about consolidation and why some of us who may have the reach in terms of the ships they've already bought. What if we cash them all in and get something really big? Now, I can't speak for anybody else, but I'm going to speak for myself and why I don't do this. Now, some of you may know, uh, some of you have been around a while, but for those that don't, a Javelin was made available to me at one point, and I rejected it. And I politely of course but i rejected it it was basically during one of the sales someone had picked up the javelin and was going to kick it back out into the pool and had gotten in touch with me through a um, an intermediary and uh basically said we'll you know We'll coordinate and we'll kick it back out at a, a time when no one is hopefully looking at it and you will be able to, you know, liquidate your fleet and move into a Javelin. And I pretty much immediately said no to this um, politely, but it wasn't... It wasn't something that I was after for a number of reasons. Of course, if you're on YouTube there's always the possibility that people will say, oh, I want to kill the YouTube guy, so I'm going to, you know, I'm going to hunt you down. And realistically, also, one of my biggest problems with that was putting all your eggs in one basket, so to speak. And so I've always kind of maintained more of a diverse fleet. That's not to say that when it comes to the big ships like this, that there haven't been temptations over the years. Certainly the Idris and the Javelin do present their, their interesting aspects. Their, their, there are things about those ships that I do like. I, I would love for Star Citizen to be a bit more a bit more of the large ship centric. I think that that would be cool. I like the idea of large ships duking it out. You know, certainly um, in Return of the Jedi, when I was a kid watching that, I, I, always, I, I wasn't so much into the X-Wings as I was into the idea of these two fleets of you know warships clashing. I, I really did like that. And while Star Wars obviously was very fighter centric up to, you know, the Millennium Falcon, which was a cargo ship that strangely enough, uh, excelled <laughs> in space combat, I guess in the right hands. But I always, you know, I've always been more attracted to the bigger ships. And so you would think that this would be kind of like a place that I would go, but it really does come down to the question of putting all your eggs in the, in one basket. And I do I do maintain a I guess a little bit of a fleet of ships that any one ship on their own comes nowhere near the firepower of something like an Idris or a Javelin, but a mass together they could very easily present a threat to one of those ships. And to me, that um, that is more valuable. The idea that even if one of those ships gets destroyed, I still have the a large portion of that firepower, of that capability, 
still available to me. Whereas if I were to fly just the singular big ship, having that destroyed would be an absolutely crippling blow to my capabilities. And so that's why I kind of, I shy away from more or less putting all my eggs in one basket. If there was one of the big ships, if there was one of the larger ships that does tempt me, that, you know, it, that kind of makes me go, ooh, I, I can totally see it. I could see making that move if my situation in the game were a little bit different or how I wanted to play was a little bit different. It would be the Kraken. The Kraken to me is the most tempting of all the big ships, though it is arguably the least as a singular ship, the least militarily capable in terms of supporting a larger group of pirate ships. To me, it is the most capable. Now, an argument, of course, could be made for the Idris there, but I think that because the Kraken is more broadly able to support more ships at a single moment or, you know, a wider variety in terms of size, I think that because of that, the Kraken, for what I would use it for, is the most com uh, capable of the three. Because I, I don't think that I would really be using the Kraken in direct engagements. I would maintain that ship further away from combat and then broadcast its power via the ships that I can maintain, using them more or less as kind of, uh, you know, using them as a vehicle to project firepower to an enemy. But beyond the military aspect of it, beyond the direct confrontation capabilities that the ship may or may not have, depending on how you view it, there is something that we have to talk about with the Kraken, um, which is... The, what it facilitates in terms of players now having uh, a base of operations in areas where a base of operations may not exist. Now, we've talked a bit about the idea that star citizen star systems are, you know, we're, we're raised with the idea that everything is the idea or everything is the size of Stanton. And we've talked about this recently. And the star systems could be vastly bigger. A ship like the Kraken that can get out to areas where many other ships would struggle to get to, whether transporting them directly via the landing pads or simply allowing them to make one-way trips all the way out to the fringes of some solar system and still have the capability of being able to refuel and get all the way back, that can allow a lot of players access to areas that ordinarily they wouldn't have. That capability to get resources in, in areas where fewer and fewer players have access. Some people might interpret that with a kind of a, a classic MMO kind of mindset where they think, oh, I've got to be item level X, Y, and Z to get, you know, to go and do missions or dungeons in this area, you know. And I don't think it's going to be quite arranged like that. I think it's going to be more arranged around that it's it's so difficult to get out there that it make it makes it much more difficult for the average player to get out there, and therefore scarcity isn't quite as bad as it is in you know in around planets that are closer to the core or to the infrastructure nodes of what is in 
more towards the core of a, a solar system. It, it would allow the fewer players that can get out there and mine those resources or who can go and do those missions at these isolated outposts. It's going to be much more profitable for the ones who can or the ones who can facilitate that. Because one of the things that the Kraken also is, is it's a bit of... It's a bit of a mobile shop in the same way that the Banu Merchantman is. Whereas this can land the bigger ships. So if you think about, you know, recently we got the ability to sell guns and armor that we find in missions. Well, the Kraken can facilitate that. It can put in potentially buy orders for the items that players are bringing back and then it can take those items into much more lucrative markets where those items are much more rare and then sell them so in a way it's kind of one of the the big capital ships that could potentially in terms of selling fuel in terms of selling repairs pay for itself being able to more or less sit out there in the further reaches of space and provide those repair services and you know provide a decent price for the goods that players come across and then being able to of course mark that up and sell that in areas where you know players might be more comfortable to play that are a little bit safer are willing to pay a bit of a premium for these items you know, it more or less could print money. And that, I think, makes it a little bit unique amongst the larger capitals because there's always that question of, is the Javelin going to be a ship that an org is forced to maintain financially as well as just mechanically? Or is the Javelin going to be able to pay for itself? And that's where a lot of these capitals, in my mind, when you're talking about a pirate fleet, that's where they more or less kind of hit the wall. Perfect timing. <laughs> now, of course, there is the question of, of combat, of losing the ship and having any kind of an online profile or any kind of online visibility could obviously make you a target for you know, eager beavers who recognize the name and decide that they want to take the ship from you. That is a possibility that certainly in my position, being a little bit unique in that regard, it, it's something that does come into consideration. Now, there are various schemes, you know, that uh, for how you could defend a ship like this, but I would prefer to be more mobile in general. And, um, it, it for me it's it's it more or less comes down to a question of is the ship lifestyle compatible and the idea of avoiding it strictly because like oh i have like a little bit of a, a profile on youtube not even really i wouldn't argue very significant but it, it's still i mean it's something that needs to be acknowledged and it's there that really isn't so much a detractor as it is the idea of being more passive in the game rather than active and that's kind of where i get off of the kraken hype train is it feels you know this this kind of feels like a dad ship <laughs> i <laughs> It feels like I'm going to be the one who's kind of a little bit more laid back because, you know, the kids might come in the room and be like, Dad, Dad, you know, she took my laptop. She took my tablet. I want to watch this. I want to watch that. <laughs> okay, kids, don't worry. I'll help you. Just because you're sitting back in a ship that more or less is earning money for you and you just got to kind of keep a weather eye on it. Um, I think that overall... If I was to, um, if I was in a situation like that, that I would probably be a lot more amenable to piloting that ship. But in the end, I want to be more active in the game than that. So 
and that's kind of where I get off of the Kraken uh, hype train. But at the same time, I have to acknowledge that as a pirate, being able to support your fleet, being able to rearm your f fleet, being able to, you know, take resources at a fair price and then sell those at a higher price in you know more legal markets being able to facilitate the fleet in such a way um <clears throat> it is very tempting i would argue that it is probably the new default raid commander for a lot of those small to medium ship fleets in that regard of all of the of the big capital arguably combat ships so let's say idris javelin and kraken of all of those ships i would say in terms of the pirate lifestyle i would actually say that the kraken would be the best the the idris would be the middle case and the javelin would be the least desirable of the three now of course i mean bear in mind when i'm saying that I'm, I'm saying like i'm not saying that you know the kraken is the ferrari and the javelin is you know the 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 very cheap affordable toyota no it's like we're talking ferrari lamborghini mclaren they're all top-notch ships but it it becomes a, a like a bit of a lifestyle choice as to which one you would take i would argue that the kraken is the best and if i were to if i was in a situation where i was either about to have a kid or that was in the cards <laughs> um in the next little while then the kraken would be probably where i would end up going so i could you know <laughs> facilitate being a parent at the same time and being ha being able to occasionally slip away from the computer while leaving the ship going the kraken would be more in tune with uh my lifestyle while still being in tune with being a pirate it's the most tempting of the three big ships for me and i would say that if you are operating a pirate fleet and you were choosing to be that support role or, uh, support is the wrong word, I think. If you were choosing to help facilitate the actions of that pirate fleet, that's the role that you wanted. I would say that the Kraken is an amazingly strong ship. But in the end, what pushes me away from it, uh, the YouTube thing a little bit, but it's more or less, it, it's just because I'm not under such constraints as parenthood or whatnot, I feel that it's less compatible with how I want to play the game. But to me, it is the natural choice as a pirate capital. Though if someone out there is a pirate and they've got a javelin and they've got it all figured out, including support, and they want to go out and just wreck, wreck people and uh, wreck whatever with the javelin, more power to you. If you've got it all figured out, more power to you. I'd love to see it. And I'm not saying that with any hint of, you know, sarcasm or like, yeah, I'd like to see it, buddy, whatever. No, I, I would love, absolutely love to see it. I would adore to see that ship just wading into combat and just duking it out with other capital ships. But for me, if I, if I had to, if I was forced to, it would be the Kraken. The Kraken is... I would argue, oddly enough, yet another situation where Drake breaks from the pack, and because of because of that, they end up being the superior choice within the constraints that I've outlined. Because obviously, there are definitely going to be situations where you would definitely want a javelin over a kraken or an Idris, you know. So, the, yeah, the, but for me, of the big boys, the Kraken is the most tempting. Anyways, that's the show for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. Thank you, thank you for watching. So, 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 if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us, please follow us, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.